Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here. So no doubt most of you will have heard that recently former WBA World Heavyweight Champion Alexander Povetkin officially announced his retirement from boxing. I figured this would be a good time to add him to my retrospective series, so let's get stuck in. So Alexander Povetkin turned professional in 2005 after the Olympics, where he won a gold medal. With a second round knockout victory over Muhammad Ali Durmas, who still to this day is an active heavyweight journeyman, and in the early part of his career, he had a string of victories against mostly tough, experienced journeymen in Germany. He was signed with promoter Wilfred Sauerland and was one of his most promising heavyweight prospects. In his 13th pro fight, he made a huge step up in class and took on the veteran American contender Larry Donald, who was coming off of a very close majority decision loss to Nikolai Valuev. Povetkin dominated Donald, winning pretty much every round and winning a wide unanimous decision. He then entered into the IBF Elimination Tournament for the right to challenge heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. For the first fight of the tournament, he took on former heavyweight champion Chris Bird. Chris was, of course, the first man to beat Vitaly Klitschko and was considered a serious test for Povetkin at the time. Povetkin broke down Bird and stopped him impressively in the 11th round. His next fight in the tournament was against the fastest rising American heavyweight contender at the time, the undefeated Fast Eddie Chambers. Chambers had a record of 30-0 with 24 knockouts, and many felt that he would have too much for Povetkin that night. After a shaky start where Povetkin was hurt with some right hands early on, he came back into the fight and completely outlanded and outworked Eddie Chambers en route to a unanimous decision victory. While in negotiations for a fight against Vladimir Klitschko, he went back to Russia and took on American veteran Taurus Sykes, knocking him out in the fourth round. At that point in time, Alexander Povetkin hired Mike Tyson's former trainer Teddy Atlas to help him prepare for the fight against Klitschko, and rather than do that, Atlas actually convinced Povetkin to pull out of the fight because he believed that Povetkin would not be ready until he gained more experienced verse. So he went back to Germany and had three knockout victories against Leo Nolan, Javier Mora and Teke Ora, and then had a points decision over 10 rounds against the American Nikolai Furter. He then got a shot at the vacant WBA regular world title against former champion Ruslan Chagaev. Chagaev had one loss on his record to Vladimir Klitschko and the fight was pretty much considered 50-50 going into it. Povetkin pretty much dominated the fight, winning by a wide unanimous decision and becoming the WBA heavyweight champion. His first title defense, he went over to Finland and took on American contender Cedric Boswell. Boswell was 42 years old and was one of these late bloomers in boxing who started late. He had only one loss going into the fight and it was an, on a shoulder injury in a fight he was winning to Jamil McLean over in America. Povetkin dominated the fight and brutally knocked Boswell out cold in the 8th round. After the Boswell fight, he had a dispute with his former trainer Teddy Atlas over comments that Atlas made about Povetkin's promoter Sauerland and his manager, so he fired Atlas and went back to his old coach. His next title defense was against WBO World Cruiserweight Champion Marco Hook in Germany. It was one of the hardest fights of Povetkin's career, a back and forth war all the way. Povetkin won by a very close majority decision in a fight that most observers thought Huck had done enough to win, but a close fight nonetheless, and Povetkin was able to get the win. Very close majority decision. After beating Huck, he hired legendary Russian fighter Kostya Zhu as his new trainer. For his next title defense, he was mandated by the WBA to fight former heavyweight champion Hazim Rachman. Rachman was 39 years old and definitely way past his prime but had earned his mandatory position to fight Povetkin. Povetkin stopped Rackman in two rounds in a dominant performance with Rackman having no chance. After beating Rackman, he went back to Russia and took on the undefeated Polish heavyweight contender Andrei Varshik, and he completely dominated Varshik. He knocked Varshik out in the third round, and that fight set up a long-anticipated showdown with Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko dominated Povetkin over 12 rounds, giving him the first loss of his career. The fight was controversial, with Vladimir doing a lot of holding and a lot of leaning, so Povetkin really had a rough night. And I'm surprised that he never needed chiropractic care afterwards, because Vladimir was basically riding him like a rodeo. After losing to Klitschko, he came back with some knockout victories against Manuel Char, Carlos Takam, and Mike Perez, and a 12th round 
TKO victory over Marius Wack on a cut. His next fight, he took on Frenchman Johan Duopal, winning by a brutal six-round KO. Had a couple of decision victories over Andrei Rodenko and Christian Hammer. Then went over to Cardiff and won a brutal fifth-round KO against the chinny but dangerous David Price. Povetkin was hurt badly in the third round, but came back to knock David Price out in the fifth. He then got himself a shot at unified world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. After a very good start where Povetkin had Joshua hurt, and appeared to be winning the fight clearly. He started to tire midway through the fight and was brutally knocked out in the seventh round by the much bigger, much younger Joshua, giving Povetkin the second defeat of his career. By that point, Povetkin was 39 years old and his stamina and speed had regressed significantly. He looked as if he was on the verge of retirement. He came back a year later and completely schooled the young fringe contender Huey Fury in the UK. He then went over to Saudi Arabia and took on Michael Hunter. The fight was officially scored a draw, but I personally had Povetkin winning very clearly. He then got a shot at the WBC interim champion Dillian White. In a shock upset, Povetkin survived two knockdowns to come back and brutally knock Dillian White out in the fifth round with a perfectly well-placed left uppercut. He had a rematch with White the following year. By this point, Povetkin was 41 years old. He was recovering from pneumonia, had an injury, and looked a shadow of his former self. He really didn't look in good shape for that fight, and he was stopped in four rounds by White, and retired shortly after. So how good was Alexander Povetkin? How would he have done if he were still at his prime now, or in any era besides his own? Let's talk about it. Now, long-time followers of mine will know that Alexander Povetkin is one of my personal favourite fighters. He's a fighter whose career I followed for many years, and he's just one of my personal favourite heavyweights, who induces a lot of nostalgia for me. I followed his career for a long time, watched many of his fights live, and yeah, out of all the heavyweights we've got right now, or in recent years, he's one of my personal favourites. Really am a big fan of the guy. He had an aggressive fighting style due to being a short, stocky heavyweight by today's standards, but was much more patient and measured than your average pressure fighter. He wasn't quite as explosive or as ferocious as Mike Tyson or David Tua, for example, who were other short, stocky heavyweights, but he was certainly a lot more technically proficient and more skilled than those guys, in my opinion. He had a great jab when he used it, and the way that he would slip under punches to land his hooks and uppercuts was fantastic. His timing and accuracy was some of the best I've ever seen, from a heavyweight, such an underrated technician. His technical skills, his punching technique, it just came together so well, and I think he was technically, in my personal opinion, just one of the best technical fighters I have ever seen at heavyweight. He had fast hands in his prime, very good stamina, a granite chin, and the heart of an absolute warrior. The way he was able to get through the Klitschko fight, despite all the leaning he had to endure, was very impressive. He had some fantastic victories, even late on in his career when he was far past his prime. Like his wins over Price, Fury and White, all of those guys were significantly younger, significantly bigger, significantly heavier, and significantly fresher than Povetkin was, and were all at one point in time very highly touted prospects in their own right. Let's not forget that Price was a Olympic bronze medalist and was considered the heir to the Klitschko throne by the British boxing media. Huey Fury, of course, had a lot to live up to based on his family name and was a highly touted prospect himself. And Dillian White, despite also being the interim champion, was, I believe, ranked number three in the world by Ring Magazine. So Povetkin being able to beat White when he did was very impressive. Povetkin also had some underrated wins, very underrated wins in my opinion, in the early part of his career, such as Eddie Chambers and Marco Hook. Marco Hook was a world-class cruiserweight who was, in my personal opinion, more suited to heavyweight and was at his absolute prime and in the best shape of his career when he fought Povetkin. His win over Shigaev too for the title proved that he could box behind a jab for 12 rounds and his wins over contenders such as Char and Wok proved his power and his persistence. In my opinion, Povetkin would have been an absolute handful for any heavyweight who did not have a significant size advantage over him, of course, and in any era, like Ali's era, for example, where most heavyweights were cruiserweight-sized 
I think he would have been a long time dominant champion. Of course, being in his prime, in the same era as the Klitschko's, made it a tough ask for him to take over the division, but all the success he was able to have, despite physical disadvantages, in my opinion, makes Povetkin one of the most underrated and underappreciated heavyweight champions of all time. Thanks for watching guys, I really enjoyed making this video. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for the retrospective series. Um, let me know if there's any tips you guys could have of how I could improve the series. I'm always open to suggestions. Stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for more retrospective career breakdowns. Thanks for watching and God bless.